Hi there YouTube, uh, my name is Matthew and uh, I thought I'd be doing an unboxing and follow-up to see what the uh, Wagner airless sprayer would be like, or sorry, airless sprayer plus. Um, anyway, I looked out there in YouTube land and basically there's very little information um, apart from the Wagner official videos, so I thought, well, you know, practice what you preach, do a little video and um, apologize for the, uh, the surroundings and I expect my wife would probably say, why don't you do a, a YouTube video on how to tidy up your garage? Um, anyway, I'm gonna get stuck into this now. Just before you think, oh my God, it's gonna be a whole video about how good is the box and the polystyrene, I'm actually gonna try and use this thing as well. So, hang in there. And well, you missed the exciting bit of unwrapping the box, but uh, anyway, inside, what have we got? So, uh, looks like a whole heap of uh, high pressure hose, box of bits, and looks like the lid. Okay, this is the carrying handle. Yeah, it's really difficult to hold a camera, well, when I say camera, hold my phone because my wife and kids have gone off with my camera that I could have put on a tripod. It actually seems in pretty nice condition. It was, uh, was reasonably well packaged and uh, safe, so that's, that's good, good for a start. And um, apart from the lid over here, there is obviously the instruction manual and looks like some filters. Have we'll a look at those in a bit. So the only bit of assembly that is required is uh, putting on the carry handle, which um, actually makes a nice change. It actually aligns up pretty well straight out, straight away, and uh, you've got a couple of wing nut screws to do that with. So no brainer there. So I'm afraid you've missed the exciting bit of me actually putting the wing nut screw on, but to be fair to uh, Wagner, they did provide a uh, spring washer as well, um, so that thing is not going to keep on coming undone. Posi drive head. And also in the bag I thought, hmm, what are these? Yeah, rubber feet maybe? Um, so checking underneath, it does actually come with... Um, Little rubberized feet, so they've obviously provided for spares as well, which is quite nice. And there's a little sort of carrying grip position there as well. Okay, so uh, getting rid of the rubber feet. They come in nice reusable bags, which is uh, resealable bags, should I say? Um, we've got two filters in there and a. And a tip. So the uh, the red one, I believe, is for sort of uh, extra fine um, thin materials like uh, acrylics, paints, primers, stains, um, and then the yellow filter is for the sort of you know thicker paints like internal emulsions, latex paints, um, and that sort of thing. For a horrible minute, I thought eh, there's only one tip. But um, checking, of course, the, uh, the gun, there is another tip in there. Of course, uh, I believe the Wagner system is quite handy in the fact that you can just uh, spin these around. So you get blockages, you can just uh, blast it out the other way, spin back round, and off you go again. Um, the handle does seem to have, obviously, uh, a safety little lever in here. So you don't accidentally start blasting paint everywhere. Click that down, squeeze, squeeze. Lock it off when you're finished, just by a simple flick up there, and it's done. It looks like the lid's got some uh, handy instructions in it for cleaning it out. Various different languages, obviously. And... Looking at it, it is got a wondered 
is there any particular way you turn this thing on? But of course, it has got a recess there for the return folder. So, at least you know, it only goes on one way. It naturally does. Click down quite securely. So at least when you're carrying your carrying around with loads of paint in it, it's not hopefully going to piss paint everywhere. So let's get the hose connected. Um, thoughtfully they've provided a little cupboard stop crap getting in there. The instructions say just connect one end of the hose to the machine and one end of the hose to the trigger. So they look identical. So I'd say these come with a protective cap as well. So I'll just see. Uh, oh. There goes the pedicure. Okay, so. See how well this lines up. Okay, pretty straightforward. And it says uh, tighten up with a spanner, don't leave it finger tight, so. I'm going to put the camera down and do that. Now what I have noticed is that it says here yeah, that the yellow filter is pre-assembled in the gun and you will have another red filter and as we discussed earlier the yellow filter is for thick materials like internal emulsion, latex paints and hold space. But actually I'm going to try this thing out on um, some thinner uh, fence paint. So I want the red filter in there. But it says uh, it's already pre-assembled. It looks like quite nicely they've given us a spare as well. Now the only downside is that um, you've got to get this, this nut off here to undo this to get the filter out. Now I just use my standard small adjustable wrench and nearly gave myself a hernia trying to get this thing off. Um, in the end I had to clamp my wrench into a vise and use this friggin great thing to get this undone and um, anyway, finally came off but it's it was so tight it was ridiculous. Um, anyway, I have loosened it now. Now just be careful when you uh, do take this off there is a spring in there so uh, it doesn't actually try and shoot out but you know what uh, garage floors are like. I mean, if you look at mine and uh, sure enough we have a yellow filter in there. Now, apparently there's uh, Slightly longer end goes in first, according to this. So I'm going to replace it with the red one. And here we go. So the one you stick in first has got a tapered end to it. The other one is quite obviously different. So at least that makes life easy. Um, obviously comes coated in some sort of uh, oil, as you can see on my fingers. So that obviously just slots in here, hopefully. Whew, for a minute there, I didn't think it was going to go. Make sure your spring is still in there. And uh, off to go. Okay, now with the, the spray unit itself, it comes with um, two different nozzles. So, and actually, thankfully, this one is marked M. And that, I believe, goes with the yellow filter. Um, so that's obviously for thicker materials. And um, I've got a spare, spare one marked excess to go with the red filter and uh, pretty easy to get off until they're actually 
charged with pressure, I believe. So, getting ready to actually try this thing out. Um, so it's got a, uh, obviously a sieve function. It does say you should sieve the paint before using it, but seeing as my wife would probably kill me if I use her best sifting flour sieve, she, I think I might have to take the risk. So this just pops off. And in here you've got the uh, access to the pump, presumably, which looks suspiciously like that tool there. And probably be used to uh, access that. But if it's anything like that hose, those two little plastic nub thingies, that ain't going nowhere fast. So I hope I don't have to remove that. Right, before first use it, um, I presume it comes from the manufacturer with probably some oil in the uh, system to keep the pump lubricated. So you obviously want to get rid of that so it doesn't go in your paint. Um, so it's suggesting that you just pull out this uh, the waste pipe or the recycle pipe. Um, it's a little bit tight fitting down the side, but fairly easy to remove. Stick it into your waste somehow. I'll work that out when I've got two hands. Um, make sure the switch is turned to the prime function and then sort of fire it up and see what happens. So let's see if I can swap hands here. And Woo, that's noisy. Well, I ran it for a while and nothing came out of the end. Um, I'm presuming I have everything set right, so assuming that it's not full of oil. Um, so the next step is they suggest is um, filling it with some water, let it all run through and make sure that you haven't got any um, you know, loose connections anywhere, which is going to fire out paint. So. Well, I uh, ran the pump for a while, did nothing, came out for a bit, but then obviously, um, as you can see, a fair amount came out, and that's drained it down a bit. It's pretty noisy when it's running. Um, I'll give you a demonstration. <laughs> It actually keeps running for a little bit of time afterwards, uh, so just bear that in mind if you're draining paint out of it. Uh, assuming this is the uh, when you're cleaning it as well, you put some warm water in there and it can just let it recycle through and uh, clean all the pumps out inside. Okay, so I've uh, tried basically leaving the water in it, just giving it a go. Um, it primed, it stopped pumping now, the engine is, uh, the motor's actually gone off. Um, but uh, here's the so it doesn't always it's a fair old, fair old mist spray there as you can hear the uh, motor pumping away to prime it kicks in as it needs it a little bit of dripping there Sure, what that is, uh, but I'll check. Oh, well, good job you check with uh, water first. As you can see, maybe I haven't uh, crimped this up tight enough, but um, we've obviously got some uh, leak points going on here. So I'll see if just uh, tweaking that out with spanner will sort that out. One note to make is that uh, after you're trying it, um, and you turn it back to prime. Um, good important thing is keep the lid on because the pressure is released out of here and, boof, and it squirts like a so-and-so and, -so and uh, showered me with water in the first attempt because I did have the lid off. So it does say keep the lid on, so I suppose that's my fault. Right, I've put some um, basically fence panel paint in there, nice and black. Matches the lid. 
Now, it did, obviously, normally you prime it, which I've already done, um, and uh, obviously you had to get rid of all the water that was in the pipeline, which was a surprisingly large amount. So it says hold it about roughly 30 centimeters away from it, start the action, and then continue sweeping down. Hmm. Okay. Of course, it always helps if you actually don't turn the machine off in between. So again, holding it roughly around about 300 mil away. Yeah, doesn't seem to want to work. Let's have a look. Perfect opportunity. I had to clear the uh, bit of goop out the out the paint nozzle, um, and sure enough, as per the instructions, switch it to prime, which then releases the uh, pressure in the hose. Spin the nozzle around from um, spray, turn that back towards the nozzle, blow the crap out of it, and then uh, reprime it. Switch it back to spray again. And hopefully this time we will see uh, some action. Hmm. Well, that ain't going to take long to spray your sheds, is it? Well, seems to do what it says in the can. Uh, note of warning, I just washed out uh, the um, bucket, uh, chucked a bucket of water in there. Yeah, it takes a few buckets to go through. Um, you can push through the hose, uh, water through there to clean that out. And I made it nice and clean and tidy, and then they recommend that you put a maybe uh, sort of an egg cup full of um, normal oil in their system just to keep things sort of lubricated and rust free um, but just warning you that um, if you've taken the hose off like I did and then you plug it back in again and you turn it on it sprays oil everywhere well, I thought it would just circulate around the system but obviously not so watch out guys unless you want to spray everything with um, vegetable oil Doop. Well, I hope you found that uh, reasonably informative. Um, unfortunately, the weather's turned to crap, so I can't go out and actually try it on some fence panels or anything like that, but uh, I think it'll do the job. Um, I may follow this up with another video of actually trying it out on some interior walls or um, some interior doors to see what the paint finish quality is like. Anyway, thanks for watching. Cheers. Bye-bye.